It's a bit of an institution, is the Land Rover Discovery. The old model was on sale for 14 years. This is the new one. It's lighter, more athletic and comes with a curvy new look. But it has some enormous boots to fill. The old one was a firm family favourite. When inside, it's totally new. Now, the old Discovery has a lovely blend of rugged switch gear, but also plush carpets and leather. But this new one, it feels like a Range Rover. Now, whilst there are a few sort of cheap plastics if you look really hard, for the most part, the plastics are fantastic. Everything feels incredibly well screwed together. It feels really very posh in here. Storage-wise, well, there is tons of it. Now let's start uh, under here shall we? So we've got a little tray and on this range topping HSE model we've even got a fridge. We've got uh, a glove box here which has got the headphones for the infotainment system. We've got a, another glove box down here where we find the Carbire 1.5 litre bottle of water. We've got a couple of cup holders under this sliding compartment and there's a secret compartment here. If I slide that, I can fit the large bottle of water in there and there's also some charging ports down there as well. Talking of secret compartments, if I press this button here, that slides open and there's space for a tablet computer. There's another cubby there and the door bins pass the car buyer big bottle test as well. All models are well equipped, but it's the mid-level SE trim that's our pick, which has leather seats, LED headlights, sat-nav and all-round parking sensors. Back here, and the doors open really very wide, which is great for families. And also, the bottoms of the doors come right underneath the bottom of the car, so it means you don't get dirty trousers when you're trying to get in and out. Speaking of which, let me just climb into the back close the door and it's a bit of a mixed bag really. Let's start off with the good. Well, there's a good amount of knee rim. Headroom is pretty decent as well thanks to the square roof line. There's also lots of creature comforts back here. Now, this is the range topping HSE luxury model. So we've got uh, rear seat entertainment with its own little handset and some rather natty little headphones. Look lovely, don't they? We've also got uh, climate control and we've got a bank of charging ports, although it must be said the most basic Discovery doesn't have any charging ports whatsoever. We've got some little cubbies here. We've got some cup holders here as well. And you can fit three adults back here as well, thanks to this completely flat floor. So the pass in the middle really won't feel that shortchanged because the seat is comfortable, there's loads of space, and they won't be squabbling for shoulder room either. Now, I did mention a bad point, didn't I? And this is it. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but this seat squab sits very low and also very flat. So if you're an adult on a long journey, you're not gonna have much leg support, which could get quite tiring. But really, it's a bit of a small niggle because the best thing about the Discovery is that you can fit two adults in the back. This is a proper seven seater, and I don't have to slide these seats forward so they've got some knee room. You can fit two full size adults back there. So let's try it. So let me just hop out and all I've got to do is press the button on the top of the seat and that will slide forwards and then I've just got to yank that forwards and climb in. It's not very graceful I admit. Let me just do the same to this seat as well so you can see what I'm talking about. So let's just let it do its thing and then just slide that forwards. So here I am back in the two rearmost seats. Let me just pull that back so you can see how much space I've got. And I'm just over five foot 10. And look, it's, t it's a little bit tight, but I mean, come on, this is a full seven seater and I've, I'm perfectly comfortable back here. There's a good amount of headroom as well. It all feels very light thanks to the dual sunroofs. We've got heated seats back here, a little cubby 
as well which is quite nice and these two seats also are isofix prepared so you can have a couple of children back here as well you can have isofix in that seat as well and in that one and all but the entry level discovery has an isofix in the front passenger seat as well let's talk about the boot let me just let it do its thing again and then just push that forwards and then climb out now one of the things buyers of the old Discovery loved was the split opening tailgate. But on the new Discovery, you don't get that at all. It's a one piece lifting tailgate. Now instead of the split folding tailgate, which opened like that so you could sit on it, Land Rover have come up with a solution. So now you get a little shelf that pops down. And you can sit on it, obviously. You can carry up to 300 kilograms and you can sit here and survey the countryside. Now, when this car is in full seven-seater mode, there's very little boot room. I mean, you could probably fit a few bags of shopping, but that's about it. But I can fold the two rearmost seats by pressing the buttons here. It does take a bit of a time. They are electric, but it is very convenient. And once they're down, you can see you've actually got a very large boot space. Let me just grab the car by seat case and slide that in. And you can see you could probably fit about four of those in there. So that's a really good space. You can, of course, fold down the middle row as well. It takes roughly the same amount of time as the two rearmost seats. And once that middle row is folded, it's like a posh van in there. It's absolutely vast. Now, there are several different ways you can fold and lower the seats. Firstly, it's from the control panel here. You can also do it from the infotainment system. And Land Rover's also created an app on its in-control app. So on your iPhone, for instance, you can configure the seats remotely from your phone. It's pretty clever stuff. And talking about technology, Land Rover's also created an activity key you can specify it and when you do that it means that you can lock the keys inside the car when you're at the beach and you can lock and unlock the car from this wristband it's really quite clever that's the inside now let's talk about engines there's a three liter supercharged v6 petrol but it's the diesels that matter the most there's a new 238 brake horsepower, 2 litre 4 cylinder and a lusty 3 litre V6 with 255 bhp. All come with an 8 speed automatic gearbox. This is the 2 litre 4 cylinder diesel engine and you'll find it in a lot of Jags and other Land Rovers these days and in the Discovery it's a good fit, it's very smooth and for the most part it's very quiet. It's only at low speeds when you're accelerating it can get a little bit noisy. Now Land Rover say that you should be getting around 43 mpg from this, but if I check my trip computer, we're doing 26.7. And the best I've seen out of this is 30 mpg, and really that's not too good. In actual fact, I wouldn't go for this engine. I'd spend the extra £1,300 and go for the 3-litre TD V6 because not only is it a smoother engine, it's also a lot quieter. Relaxing is the best way to describe driving the Discovery. You sit in virtually identical surroundings to the Range Rover, so the steering wheel is taken straight out of the Range Rover, and the steering wheel angle and the seat positioning is virtually identical as well. And you just drive around, especially with this armrest down, with this very imperious driving position. You just somehow feel just a little bit better than everybody else on the road. The eight-speed also slips through gears so easily, and overall it's a very quiet car to drive around in. It's only the tyre roar that really punctures the quietness in here. The Discovery is also a lot better to drive than it was before. The steering is a lot sharper and because the car is around 450 kilograms lighter than the old Discovery, it's just a little bit more agile. If I was being picky, it's not quite as fun to drive as an Audi Q7, but really it's not too bad at all. What's perhaps of more interest to people who take their SUVs off-road is Land Rover's trusty all-terrain response system. There are a number of different driving modes for different off-road situations and the Discovery can wade through as much as 900 millimetres of water. Negatives? Well, in certain guises, the Discovery is a little pricey. Across the board, it's more expensive than its rivals. 
and the most desirable versions aren't cheap. This HSE Luxury with a 2 litre diesel and some much needed options is £74,000. Visibility out the back isn't brilliant either, but this is outweighed by the fact that new Discovery is a lot nicer to drive than ever before and it has the refinement levels of a Range Rover. If you've enjoyed this review, watch our video of the Audi Q7, like and share this video and please subscribe to our channel by pressing our logo.